Welcome back to another Good Eye podcast. Today's guests are Tom Leahy and Candace Suarez from the Brass Ring Project. Now, they're involved in two organizations. One is the Brass Ring Project. One is Optimum Ed. We'll get into the differences. But uh, they provide guidance, inspiration, and resources. Uh, college or rising college students, people looking at college or even the trades, might need to navigate that chapter of their lives. So we'll get into the differences and the resources and all that stuff on this conversation with Tom Leahy and Candace Suarez from the Brass Ring Project on today's Good Eye Podcast. And welcome to another Good Eye Podcast. I'm Jay Smack. And here we talk about, and two, people making a difference. People engage with their community. We touch on subjects like health, wellness, nonprofits, responsible business, Today, nonprofits is the word, and we're talking to Tom Leahy and Candace Suarez from the Brass Ring Project. Gang, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, my my pleasure. Excited. All right, cool. Let's get right to it. And um, I want to find out a little bit about both your backgrounds. As I was checking out the website, uh, both of you are obviously experts in the field of education, and that's our subject today. Educational opportunities um, after high school, focusing on college, but not specifically college, other options for people moving on in their career, other opportunities, because it's hard. It's like it's like one of the things they, they say sort of as the, uh, the benchmark uh, under the heading, what they should have taught me in high school was, you know, <laughs> Nobody ever learns right. how to really balance a checkbook or um, change a <laughs> fuse or anything like that. These practical skills. So we'll get into that as well. But um, Tom, since just since yep. you're in the top left here in my in my screen, yep. and I see you first. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and about the Brass Ring Project, and then we'll talk to Candace and find out her background as well. Sure. Um, yeah, love to. Well, uh, so I've been. Um, uh in the uh arena of higher education for uh many many years part-time to start um get involved uh with the financial aid early on in uh, my wealth management career but as the years went by i got more and more uh intrigued and passionate about this whole college thing and um few years ago, uh, about 12 now, I guess, I uh, left wealth management to uh, do uh, the higher education uh, consulting uh, full time. That's how passionate I am about it and how important I, I think it is. Um, because, you know, there's a lot of young folks out there who are trying to figure out where they're headed um, and how to get there, basically. Um, and I think, you know, the first question is, where are you headed? Um, and, uh, so that's really where we, we begin our process. Um, and it's all about determining what that, uh, that employment looks like, uh, first job on the other side of college, or perhaps it's not, you know, after high school, you know, so maybe a better way to describe what we do is post-secondary education advising. That's a, hard to say, but, uh. You know, so it's really about, uh, you know, figuring out who they are, what they love, um, what their skills are, what makes sense for them as an individual. And then we create that, you know, the path to that end, to that goal. And we navigate that journey with the family and the student to, uh, you know, hopefully find success for the student. And also, you know, coming from a financial background do it efficiently for the family so i can't lose sight of where i came from so we want to make sure that we we do it as efficiently as possible um so um when candace and i um began working together uh, we quickly uh came to realize that we both had an affinity for uh helping um young people who um were not the valedictorian that, that were not the quarterback of the, you know, uh, football team and going on to play college sports um, or, you know, whatever it might be that, you know, we wanted to be able to help uh, any student find a way forward, no matter where they were, you know, who they are, or what their their challenges. And um, that conversation grew over time. And uh, 
So we uh, just um, this past spring uh, made a decision that we were going to create a, a sister nonprofit uh, for our college uh, planning company, Optimum Ed, so that we would be able to offer what we do to any uh, student, no matter what their uh, social uh, demographic background was, um, because there's a lot of young people out there who uh, deserve to go to college, um, should go to college, but maybe they don't um, exactly know how to get there or, you know, they can't afford to, to get help. So we're trying to, um, through the Brass Ring Project, reach that population. And I'll, I'll let, you know, Candace talk more specifically about the circumstances and what's going on and, and how we feel like we can we can have an impact. Yeah, that's a great jumping off point. You actually answered one of my uh, next questions, what, wh- which is what led to the founding of the Brass Ring Project. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Candace, maybe you can um, expand a little bit on what Tom was saying as what the difference is between Optimum Ed and Brass mm-hmm. Ring Project in a little bit more detail. And as well, maybe start with some of your background as well. And, and both you guys are are pretty humble. I'll just rip off a couple of your bona fides here. Uh, Tom is a member of the Higher Education Consultants Association, the Virginia Association of Student Financial Aid Administrators, International Association of Registered Financial Consultants. He has a book out called Plan for College, Prepare for Life, The No-Nonsense Guide to Higher Education Planning. Candace, you have a master's in education and school counseling, post-master's certificate in applied behavior analysis, co-founder, of course, of the Brass Ring Project, and you were in the trenches as a school counselor for years. Mm -hmm. So both of you guys have walked this path uh, Mm -hmm. and know of what you see. Oh, and um, I need to mention you're a cancer survivor as well, which is amazing. Um, So Candace, a little bit about maybe the difference between Optimum Ed and who you're serving, as Tom was talking about a little bit, um, and maybe also if you could get into a little bit about um, options aside from college and how you address that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the difference between Optimum Ed and the Brassman Project is they're intertwined and feed off of each other. Um, so basically, anyone who comes to work with us at Optimum Ed is able to apply for a subsidy to get a portion or all of their fees for us covered by the breast Band process. Um, because we're looking to really help level the playing field for kids who maybe need that forward thinking and drive it to figure out what's next for them and we didn't even know where to start. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that I'm glad you touched on that because Optimum Ed, and I, I, I like the distinction, but Optimum Ed also needs some recognition as well. Mm-hmm. It's there to help kids make decisions, whereas Brass Ring Project mm-hmm. provides a little bit, uh, uh, some more resources. Now, with that in mind, mm-hmm. do you ever work with companies directly or in prospective employers as far as any sort of tuition reimbursement plan or anything like that, or is that completely outside the fold of what you're doing? Um, the best way process is very new. <laughs> so that wouldn't be out of the realm of something we would consider for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. But um, at this point, we're pretty grassroots, um, looking for donors, that kind of thing. As we get established and find out where our needs are, we would be entertaining any of that kind of thing. Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. I I was just going to, I was just going to jump on there and say, you know, if there's anybody out there who wants to get in on the, you know, the ground floor of this project that um, we'd love to have a conversation and see how they might, you know, uh, get involved with us. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, thinking, fortune 500s and stuff this could be a great resource for them as well as finding i mean it's sort of a recruitment tool as well because you're yep. helping these these prospective students and yep. employees find find their footing in a career path how do the trades play into that well 
I mean, we are firm believers that kids have to experience it a little bit to be able to know if that's a true path for them, right? Um, so we spend a lot of time helping them determine career paths. We also know that career path is something that could be fluid. You're not in one career for 50 years and then retire anymore. <laughs> it's something that you be looking for your next your step, right? So we're always looking for opportunities to have our kids speak to people that are doing the work, um, whether they're headed to college or whether they're not. So setting them up with someone to talk to who might be a master carpenter or someone who might be an architect or a physician's assistant. So depending, it doesn't matter the education level, but offering them that ability and opportunity to learn what it's like to walk in that person's shoes, what was their path on how to get there, and connecting them to those um, opportunities. Yeah, and, and Jay, that's the first, really the first step for our process as well. And uh, we don't just, you know, ask the, you know, the student, what do you want to be when you grow up? We go through a very extensive uh, career and academic assessment process with every student we work with, um, an online assessment, and then meetings that that follow that to really understand, uh, you know, cognitive ability, personality, and interests, and how they come together, create a, a profile that then del delivers a list of jobs that are appropriate. And then we can, you know, look uh, into those jobs in terms of what's really involved, talking to people, as Candace said, um, and then, you know, the, you know, what is it going to be paying? Is it going to be around in 10 years, 15 years? Um, how many job openings are we going to be competing for? It's all about making very best decision possible as to that that first step into the working world, whether it's after college or not. You brought up some really interesting things there, and there's a couple of things I'd like to ask you about. One is... First of all, how, whether you've even come up against this, I assume maybe you have with Optima Med, maybe not yet with uh, Brass Ring Project, but how AI is affecting career choices, mm -hmm. career possibilities. It's eliminating some jobs. It's also creating some other opportunities, but everybody's freaking out about That's AI and, you know, and it's the new industrial revolution that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. if, if you want to comment on that, and then I'll mention the other one I was thinking about. Um, yes, you have we haven't really come across it yet. Um, I I am a someone who embraces it in moderation, you know. Right. <laughs> um, I use it when I'm looking for idea generating, um, that type of thing. But I think it just opens up different possibilities. Yeah, that's the way I view it. I mean, yeah, I'm always yeah. looking forward. Mm -hmm. And I may be a yeah. little, I may be a little biased because in okay. my field of work, I'm in the audio and voiceover and media realm. So I'm okay. keeping an eye on it because it's, it's mm -hmm. going to put some people out of work. But yeah. like you said, Candace, it's here. We have to, you have to address it yeah. and if not embrace it, at least understand it. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it just, I, we've seen, we've seen this kind of situation through history, where new technology and new industry, mm -hmm. something comes online and it, and it uh, we're, our first impression is that it's going to, you know, uh, hurt people because it's going to do away with jobs. But in reality, once it's established and we see exactly what it is, we're really creating new opportunities and new jobs. We're just having to shift, you know, education and training to embrace it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, too, that just goes into the idea that a career across a lifetime grows and evolves yeah. as work changes and evolves as well. So just having that growth mindset <laughs> to know that you're not choosing a destination at the age of 16, 17, you're choosing a direction, right? And you have to be willing to grow and move with that direction. That's a great point. Yeah, you're not choosing a destination. You're choosing yeah. you're choosing a journey. Mm -hmm. um, right. 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the other thing I was thinking about, and Tom, you mentioned cognitive ability, which uh, sort of prompted a question I had. Not everybody's a great test taker. You know, SATs were the law of the land for so long, um, competency tests, if you will, but not everybody's a great test taker, but they might be, you know, smart as a whip or smartest person in the room, but they're, they're, they have a more applied uh, method for, you know, whether they're a visual learner or a, a tactile learner. How, how yeah. do uh, SATs play into to what you're experiencing on a um, SATs or, or some sort of equivalency exam, um, you know, as far as being a gatekeeper towards uh, career choice? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think the impact uh, in terms of standardized testing, obviously, is in the the area of uh, admissions, you know, college admissions, because um, that's really where we've, you, we've got to look and see if this, the schools are applying to, you know, even require standardized testing. There's a uh, uh, last figure I saw was something like 60 percent of the schools uh, are test optional in some way. Uh, so when it comes to that that student who perhaps is not a great test taker for whatever reason, um, then it has to be woven into the uh, search process we go through, looking at what schools we're going to apply to. Uh, and, and we have, a, you know, a, a way of, of doing that. And um, so it's all it's all part of finding the right fit for the student um, in terms of the campus, the, the academics, the cost and those other uh, issues such as, you know, not being a test taker, or maybe they be having, you know, we have a 504 that we have to carry to, to college because we need accommodations for, um, you know, processing issues or something like that. So all these things we can uh, take care of in the planning process because every student is is unique. You know, it's we try to cookie cutter everybody, but we're not. We're everybody's unique. Everybody has a, has different you know, uh, issues, different skills, gifts, and we have to design that that path based on that. We've talked a lot of uh, concept and potentialities, but let me lay out what is on your website that you offer, uh, which leads into my next question. You offer career assessment and coaching, college enrollment coaching, financial aid assistance, subsidized mm -hmm. fees, which we touched mm -hmm. on. When do you often engage with students and or parents slash guardians in their education journey, their pre-graduate education journey? And do you ever um, find that clients or uh, subjects come to you very late in the game? And is it ever too late to really en enlist your assistance? It's never too late. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, love to, we love to get freshmen or even end of eighth grade because we can really help them package their high school career in such a way that they are more um more likely to get into schools if college is that plan for them. Um but, you know, we work with kids that are already in college that are saying, wait a second, I don't know what I'm doing here. So you know it's never too late. But, you know, if we get them early enough, if we get them in that grade, we can help them plan out extracurriculars as an experiment for potential careers, right? We can help them sit that. We can help them plan out their um, high school course as far as rigor and, you know, balance, um, helping them go deeper into that career exploration, um, building that high school resume, you know, all of that stuff. So with the Black Green Project, kids that have college in their sites, if they're first-generation college students and their parents are working, you know, one job after another, just trying to keep food on the table, that is not part of their priority, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They wouldn't necessarily know how to package them in that way. And we don't want that to be a barrier for kids not going to college because they didn't know how to do it. Yeah, that's a really loaded 
question, subject, uh, whatever, whatever yeah. you want to call it, because how do they know what they don't know? And how do you reach, exactly. you know, how do you reach kids or parents who don't know what they don't know and aren't considering college? There may be a place for them. Mm -hmm. right. um, we're hoping to do a lot of outreach. We're hoping to partner with other nonprofits who are already in underserved communities and offer this as something we can add to what they're doing. Um, again, we're in very early stages, so we're open to any and all of those conversations to try and get, you know, the word out there that we're here and doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in uh, our subsidy structure uh, allows us to, you know, financially help um, families of varying income levels as well. It's not just, you know, um, families that are at the poverty level or whatever. It's, you know, it, there's it's a scaled um, process that we uh, use to determine what subsidy a family would receive based on their their income so um yeah we can we can help anybody what are your um sources for subsidies uh i know it's early but is it primarily don uh donations um yeah. a, a program any programs in the works for anything like that we uh Obviously, uh, being, uh, you know, uh, grassroots at this point, a moment we're looking for individual donors. Uh, we need to start creating awareness. Um, through awareness will come that financial support. Uh, we're, it, we're too young at this point to uh, uh, successfully uh, apply for, for grants, but that will be coming. Mm -hmm. uh, we would love to have um corporate sponsorship uh as you alluded to early on i think that would be um, a great way to jump start you know what we're trying to achieve here by getting some uh larger uh, companies corporations on board as um you know annual sponsors of uh of our initiative we're having a pancake breakfast Ah, yes. <laughs> on, on February you 17th. Like pancake? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on February yeah. 17th, we're looking for um sponsors for that, as well as people who want to come and eat pancakes. <laughs> that that's a great idea for events having at least just getting people out because yep. no matter how digital we get and how artificial our intelligence gets, we're still human animals that thrive yeah. on contact and interaction you know we need to see people's right, yeah. faces we need to we need to feel that energy and that's that's the best way now yeah. now you brought up something tom grants mm -hmm. and grants are something i never even thought about when i was in high school uh but i do remember mom my mom going you should look into grants there are grants out there that completely go to waste there's a grant for everything you never know uh, people who like to wear purple socks, you know, there's a grant for them. Right, right. Do, do you do you guys or will you assist with grant writing uh, as a possible, you know, resource for for kids facing college? Well, there, there's two aspects to that, Jay. First of all, I was when I was talking about grant, uh, funding the Brass Ring Project with grants. That is the Brass Ring Project reaching out and applying to other organizations, foundations that support educational initiatives that kind of grant. Um, as far as uh, often what is concerned and what we do for students, we do touch everything that has to do with funding college. So um, we we help them, you know, identify opportunities for scholarships and grants, you know, outside of the system. When I say system, I'm talking about federal money, state money, collegiate money. And then there's the, you know, outside scholarships or private scholarships. So we help with all of that. And so grants are a part of that, um, that assistance that we provide to students as well. Okay. Um, before we wrap everything up, do you point students from the Brass Ring Project side toward possible grants they may be eligible for, or is that something completely different that's more on the Optimum Ed side? Well, if, if someone engages with with the brass ring project they will be provided uh planning and implementation implementation services by optum ed so they will receive the same help that optum ed gives to you know uh individual students that don't uh 
that are not subsidized through the Brass Ring Project. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that clears it up. So, um, okay, as we head towards wrapping it up, if you would, yep. let everybody know where they can find information about the Brass Ring Project and spe uh -huh. specifically who that targets or the who that helps and then Optimum Ed, just so we can clarify. Sure, yeah. So, um, you know, the BrassRingProject.org is the website and there's a contact function on, on the website. Uh, so you, that's probably the easiest way uh, to, to get a hold of us and we'll respond. Um, we, you can uh, email us uh, at uh, C. Suarez or T. Leahy at the BrassRingProject.org. Um, or you can call, you know, uh, call us. Uh, my cell is 804-937-2288. Um, or if you want to come through op the OptoMed side of, of things, uh, that's OptoMedCenter.com. Um, there's a contact function there as well, plus our telephone number uh, for everyone, 800-457-1364. We'll get you to someone uh, with the organization and we'll figure out how to help you. Okay, cool. And I'll put all those links on the uh, podcast website. And of course, all that info is on mm -hmm. your websites as well. And in the interest sure. of uh, full disclosure, I had to jump back on with you due to number one, a glitch uh, in my recording. But number two, I wanted to clarify those two starkly. So right. thank you for uh, taking yeah. a moment here and please convey my thanks to uh, Candace as well. I, I sure will. Thanks, Jay. Appreciate uh, the time you spent with us. All right. Tom Leahy and Candace Suarez, Suarez from the Brass Ring Project. All the info will be on the website. Thank you, Tom. Thank, thank you. Thanks again to Tom and Candace for their time today. Uh, I will put all the links that we mentioned on the website at goodeyepodcast.com. Optimum Ed is at optimumedcenter.com. And the Brass Ring Project is at brassringproject.org. Uh, thebrassringproject.org. So thanks for your time, attention, and intention today. If you have a conversation you want to have, it's interesting stuff. Maybe benefit the community. Maybe somebody doing good stuff in the community responsible business, all that good stuff. That's why we're here. Uh, the uh, Good Eye Podcast suggests that you look at life with your good eye uh, because it's it's a balance and it's a challenge. But thank you once again for your time, attention, and intention today. See you again back here for another Good Eye Podcast. <laughs>